Uh, we now have an interesting story from China, but it's going to be told to you by a German who's been employed for some years by this Chinese, co Chinese company. It is called, in the short form, Wafeng, and uh, Thomas Schmidt is going to tell you a little about the company and his work, which sounds very interesting, as Director of Innovation. Yeah, hello. Yeah, Huafeng is a, is a large uh, textile manufacturer with a reputation of supplying uh, most innovative material to the sport uh, industry. Uh, so our customers today are all the major big sport brands like Nike, like Adidas, like Under Armour, Skechers and, and many others. And uh, we manufacture uh, high quality textiles with a modern state-of-the-art uh, technologies, different type of knitting and, and weaving machines. We do the dyeing process, the digital printing, and also we developed a, a very new 3D coating technology for textile. We call it haptic, uh, because haptic uh, shows us, uh, allows us to, to create 3D surfaces on the top of a textile where we can have a touch experience. And, and within that haptic technology, we will also want to integrate some smart electronics now and create some special um, high-tech um, products. So uh, we in ID TechX, we've, uh, years ago I was involved in our first report on uh, e-textiles. Um, uh, we were looking there mainly at e-fibers. We realized it was a long-term thing, but there was the uh, um, European project with five countries involved in doing fibers that would have a supercapacitor first layer and a second layer of a dye-sensitized solar cell photovoltaics. So it sounded like magic. Your shirt could not only capture enough energy to charge your phone, it could store it until you needed to. And uh, that project, I think, is probably finished now. It's called Power Weave. But there are other projects as well uh, now in terms of um, at the University of Salford in Britain. They're working, uh, Professor Suarez, who's lectured here, at this event. He's, they work on uh, piezoelectric and photovoltaics on a fibre. Um, but again, this sort of thing's long term. It's nice to think of it on an airship or onto uh, sails of a sailing boat and how that sort of thing might be able to uh, uh, um, provide electricity from the rain and the wind and the sun. But this is, um, uh, I think, a fairly distant proposition. So I think your interest is on what sort of time scale at Huafeng and what time scale are you trying to find things for? Yeah, actually, I mean, China is well known for um, being a manufacturing place and, and a quick to production uh, place. However, we have set up a very modern innovation department and also a modern innovation strategy. So we work on different timescales. We have teams working on the close to market innovations within half year, one year, seasonal changes of the products. Uh, but we also have a long-term uh, strategic uh, research where we look into three years, five years uh, uh, time span and where we try to identify new technologies and bring them to China wherever we find them in the world. We also develop new technologies in China for sure. And then we try to put it together within, within an innovation network where we have partners, uh, government-funded projects, uh, innovative partner companies and we try to put the system together and then offer it to our customers. Uh, the people watching this video, we would hope, are going to approach you uh, with any ideas they have. You welcome ideas and inventions, uh, uh, as long as they're not extremely speculative and very long term. Uh, does it cover yes. um, more than fibres, presumably, because fibres is probably beyond the five year span, isn't it, uh, in terms of any uh, clever fibres other than just conductive ones. Um, it, it, for you, it's um, ways of putting laminate on textiles, is it? Uh, and is it exclusively apparel? Actually, we have lots of different uh, products and uh, we start actually by manufacturing our own fibers. So we have our own yarn factories in China, uh, but we also do the knitting and the weaving process. So we make the, the fabric as well and we do the finishing process as well, where we can also add some coatings on top of the fabric. So we are very uh, versatile actually and, uh, and uh, we... Would we use that? What application? Yeah, the application we serve both industries, the footwear and the apparel industry and, and mainly for the sport industry. So we are very much focused on, on sporting goods, sport sneakers uh, and sport apparel. 
uh, mainly made out of synthetic fibers, polyester, nylon, spandex for stretchable uh, fabrics. Uh, and absolutely sure we are looking for specialized fibers as well. Conductive fibers, uh, infrared absorbing fibers, uh, keep you warm, keep you cold functionality. Uh, moisture management plays a, a very important role and the moisture management can be a achieved by the fiber itself, but also by chemical treatments after the uh, fabric uh, manufacturing. And also we do some coatings like the haptic uh, 3D coatings where we add some value into the, uh, into the fabric or on top of the fabric. And we also supply finished components to the footwear factories. For the haptic, for example, we, we not only produce a, a roll of fabric, but we, we cut it in small pieces. We do the, the 3D coating and we uh, supply ready to assemble components in shoe factories. Yes, I read that human beings are something incredible, like 90%, 95% of your living time, you're in contact with textiles. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're pretty central to the human race, aren't they? So from your point of view, that's inorganics, it's organics, it's composites, it's anything that may do a good job, but it has to be washable, does it? Yes. Uh... Washability is very important for Texas because we all sweat, we all get dirty. Uh, so uh, integrating electronics into fabric is not, not that easy because of the waterproof uh, properties. We also need to consider chemical safety actually. Our customers and our, the consumer markets are very sensitive to toxicity and, and chemicals or, or heavy metals or whatever is used in electronic industry might not be suitable for consumer products in, in the textile markets. So we have to be very careful in developing uh, environmentally friendly products, uh, products which can be easily recycled, uh, where we can at least take out the electronics and bring it to a, another disposal stream uh, later on if, if necessary, or some really non-toxic electronics that would be our dream. Yes, we, we are very concerned in ID TechX, that's why at this event for the first time we have this award for the toxicant replacement hero so it's a company or person who's been involved in finding a good alternative for these things that have the toxicants in it's not just whether the substance is toxic in its use they usually are not but it's when it's toxic when it is disposed of or something is abused if it is overheated it's in a fire or anything like that and uh, we're quite disturbed we were that we were able to do a roadmap of the next 10 years and every year there are several things coming out with either lead or cadmium or heavy metals bismuth um, or breaking down to form cyanide and so on and um, it's particularly true of some sectors like um, photovoltaics uh, uh, but there are versions that are totally non-toxic that are, are, are not exact replacements but I think um, a very good job is done of finding of um, various organizations have data sources so that if a manufacturer a manufacturer like you today wanted to find an alternative to some battery that was non-toxic or something there are databases for that but what we've tried to do is look forward because you're quickly getting buried in the new things and the new things you don't know what they're gonna what poisons they're gonna have in unless you Base, have very close attention and certainly you don't know what alternatives are being developed that you should really prefer your investment uh, towards, put it towards because it reduce, reduces your risks and obviously it's a, an ethical thing too I think. Uh, the worry is that like textiles we've had other things like smart windows they they're going to be used in huge amounts, most of them, and so it may be something that doesn't seem much of a toxicity risk, but then it is because it's going to have under controlled disposal and be out there in very large numbers, and we all have a responsibility on that, I guess. So um, you're concerned about the, the, the emission of gases if it's abused or if it is um, when it is disposed of, that sort of thing, I guess, yeah. Yes, I mean, this is the end of life uh, disposal is important to control it and to have the right type of recycling ways uh, to bring it back into, into the circular economy. Uh, but also during the use, it is very important that uh, there's no migra migration of toxic chemicals to the skin. We, we talk about skin contact materials uh, with clothing. Um, and also during manufacturing, also our workers need to be safe uh, using these chemicals. 
Uh, so chemical safety is a big, big topic in, the, in these consumer markets. And I mean, we serve the sporting <coughs> industry, people who prefer a healthy lifestyle, people who go outdoor to enjoy the, the nature. And for these products, we need to make sure it matches the expectation of the consumers uh, that everything is safe and healthy. And we try very hard uh, and, and when, when, whenever we start a new innovation project, we, we evaluate uh, environmental performance and we direct our innovation into a, a direction where we, we feel it is safe to use. The surface irritant, um, as, as you, as you, there are other names for it, but uh, uh, the blue asbestos sort of story where we don't have blue asbestos anymore, but that wasn't chemically reactive. The fact was that the fibres went through your body and caused all manner of uh, pathologies along the way, so that wasn't a chemical tox toxicant, but it, it was very serious. Um, so people talk of uh, carbon nanotubes if they were free in the air uh, being a bit of a problem, uh, possibly the longer ones are a bit of a problem, but on the other hand, from what we saw, the far more serious things were these um, very nasty chemicals that have chemical action. Uh, do you look at both of those or do you, do you feel that the chemicals action is the main thing you have to look out for? No, actually both both of them are important and uh, I mean carbon nanotubes, uh, you mentioned them, uh, we feel it is uh, too unsafe uh, for use in consumer products right now. We just don't know enough uh, about it. Uh, we feel much better for graphene, but also <coughs> graphene needs to be evaluated carefully on, on uh, human toxicity. Uh, and the chemical safety, chemical toxicity by, let's say, heavy metals or some kind of uh, treatment chemicals we put on inside the yarns or on top of the chemicals, coatings, uh, dye stuff of, of, uh, of um, yarns that need to be well controlled and there are non-toxic dye stuffs available and there are some uh, old style azo dye stuffs available which are maybe cheaper but not, not really <laughs> good for uh, health that need to be very closely monitored and controlled and we do it ourselves, also our customers, the, the sport brands uh, do a great job in, in changing the supply chain, taking care about wastewater treatment and, and that all the suppliers comply to these uh, standards of, of uh, um, engagement. We read some uh, scientific reports which expressed concern that sometimes you may feel you have very little of something like carbon nanotubes or very fine particles, carbon particles, uh, and you have very little of some chemical um, uh, poison, uh, but sometimes there's some of the research seems to indicate that they can leverage each other. In other words, they can have a multiplier effect. So you you mustn't relax, even if it's small quantities, particularly if if you have a surface irritant as well as a chemical reactant. Uh, I don't. Do you encounter that or anything? I don't know. I mean, there's so much that's not known. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Really? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's really a, a big unknown area on toxicity. That's why we have to be double careful and really only use uh, the safe materials. And this is somehow a conflict when moving now into the sensors and the electronic business, where electronic industry is just operating in a different way and and. Uh, using different materials not that close to the consumer and to the consumer skin they usually they're encapsulated in some machines and in computers and uh, so you don't touch them directly uh, having these chemicals on the textile is something different and uh, we need to watch out to use safe sensors safe electronics safe uh, connecting uh, wiring uh, and I think it can be done. There are lots of options available, but, but uh, selecting the right options and working with the right partners is getting more and more important. Yeah. A very responsible company and a very yeah. large one, I gather. How big is it now? Yes, actually, the company was founded about 20 years ago uh, out of nothing, and it's a really amazing Chinese uh, growth story. Uh, today we have about 4,500 employees and we are still growing rapidly and uh, we have a plan within two to three years we want to reach 10,000 employees and we are growing in all different segments on in our knitting capacity, on our weaving capacity. Uh, we have set up a brand new modern dye house now with a state-of-the-art uh, um, wastewater treatment system that we comply to the strictest uh, water regulations. 
uh, and um, we set up photovoltaic solar cells all on our roofs uh, uh, covered with uh, solar panels. We have wind power for our dying house, uh, so we also uh, get very engaged in, in sustainable energy and, and try uh, to change the su supply chain of uh, textile manufacturing. Well, thank you very much for your time. We have to keep in contact with you. And you have a wonderful job, a fascinating job, but obviously a very responsible one. Good luck. Thank you. Good Thanks luck. very much.